Well, we would get up in the morning <laughs> and we would shower and get dressed and then go over to the dining room, <coughs> have our breakfast. You forgot. Huh? You forgot roll call. <coughs> we had, <coughs> oh, sorry. Well, we had, we, <coughs> roll we call. could, yeah, but we could eat our <coughs> breakfast before roll call. Excuse <coughs> me, we? no, we had roll call before we went into breakfast. Oh, did you? And then you had to pull up your uniform to be sure you had on guard belt and you <laughs> couldn't wear garters. <laughs> If you want to be a professional nurse, it is necessary to choose a good school of nursing because only in a good nursing school can you get the preparation on which your future as a nurse must depend. In those days, we didn't learn anything about the male anatomy at all. And in the GU either, we, learned, we didn't know anything about it because we weren't allowed to go near the male, you know. So <laughs> we had orderlies in those days that if the male needed a bedpan or whatever, then, you know, he, they took care of that, and we didn't. We weren't allowed to. But then during the war, when things, which I was here during the war, became very scarce, you know, the orderlies on the, on the wards, and, and uh, they didn't have orderlies. And so we had to sneak around. We had one instructor there. She caught you ever getting a bedpan from a man. She'd scream at you. She'd stand at the end of the hall and call her your name. <laughs> the educational system in nursing is um, a little bit different as it evolved than some other uh, professions because the focus was on learning at the shoulder of other nurses with some educational foundation, a little bit of science and a little bit of support for all the things that you were doing. But it was kind of learning on the job with the support of an instructor and some of the staff. So it was upside down in the sense that usually if you're wanting to take on some kind of a professional role, you have a good solid scientific foundation for that. And some of the changes I think that I see are the movement to more education for nurses. Uh, people walk up a career ladder. If they can't, you know, go to college right away, they have opportunities to get into the discipline and they walk up a career ladder. So I value that kind of thing too, but, but the career ladders have to be built stronger so that more people can uh, move up that ladder and have the advantage of the skills that coming out of the baccalaureate program, you know, people have to apply to their practice. There's been some wonderful research uh, about the impact of educational preparation of nurses and the outcomes that patients have, and it provides evidence for the value of, of nursing practice also, because the skill sets are, are, are different. You have a different foundation in which to make your critical judgments about patients, and I think that's why the research is indicating that um, the outcomes are better because you have that foundation in biochemistry and whatever else that um, helps you to make good decisions for patients. There's so much more now research and uh, support for evidence-based interventions that that's, I think, a really major dramatic change in uh, you know, how, how education is formulated. Um, when when nurses graduate, they have to know that it's lifelong learning ahead of them, and that's got to be a constant. They no longer can come out of school and say, I'm set for a career and I'm going to go to work, and that's the way it's going to be. Clearly, that has not been the case for many years. But that is a, a, a real a new reality, I think, that people have to experience when they come out of school. Uh, nurses now hang IV medications, um, in the units, in the intensive care units, they may have five, ten lines going with different medications going. A few years ago, that would not have been done by nurses. Definitely physicians would have done that, and they probably would not have done that many meds in that route. They would not have given IVs uh, as much as they do now. Uh, that is so sophisticated. The interaction of medications is really profound. Um, and that goes along with other, uh, other technologies as well. Um, you just see that all over the place, not only in intensive care, you see it on the regular floors. Uh, wound care by advanced practice nurses, they many times know the technology that will work much better than the physicians. And it's a matter of educating the physicians 
as to which product will heal that wound quicker. The care has changed. It's a much higher tech care than it was. Uh, I think new nurses have to know when to balance that. They have to know how to balance the science and the caring part of their profession. When I was with my granddaughter, Tony, she's in nursing, and uh, one of her uh, things was that I looked at some of her curriculum and it, and it said, when you walk into a room, and this is what we were taught, that hasn't changed, you assess the room, you look at the room, the, the, the patient, how the patient looks and, and what she's doing, how you know how the patient's feeling. Remember we were always mm -hmm. taught that, you walk in and look at everything and then you know whether the patient's progressing or whether it's, they're deteriorating. And that's still the same, that's one thing that hasn't changed. <laughs> But most of you, you know, everything is, is, is in for, you know, new, which is the way it should be. You know, it should, nursing should progress just like any other system.